Welcome to week four class and this uh, outline worksheet. I just want to make sure everyone follows what they see here to a T and also click on these links here to help you with citing sources and also how to find information on your articles as well. Um, not, this link doesn't give you how to find our information in your articles, it shows you how to cite, but I'm going to show you how to find information on your articles. Okay, so you're going to take what you did last week and you're going to kind of come down here and um, expand a little bit on an outline. This is not an essay, so don't write an essay. You'll lose, you'll get a zero and you'll have to redo with at least a 15% deduction. So treat this like what it's supposed to be an actual outline. So when you get to the introductory part, this hook statement here. Now this hook statement is the attention grabber. Those of you that love reading that first sentence in the first chapter when you first open the book is very important. It grabs the attention of the audience and that's what you're doing here. Okay, And everything you're writing is going to be third person, not based off of your perception. Your, your, your individual viewpoints are respected but are to be left out of all academic writing and it should be all in third person. No second person or first person. Too much first person, that's a zero with a redo. Um, some first person could result in a deduction in a, of a whole section or paragraph. So make sure you're doing just third person. But notice how in this one I just put something very impactful about video games and movies. I take what I did last week in my example and I'm using it here again. Okay. Now, in the background and contextual information, I'm helping my introduction. Okay. Now, an introduction you'll see in next week's video should be about 100 to 120 words. Okay. So this is going to help me, and I can use this information in my introduction to expand, and I'll show that in the video next week. Okay. So you have video games and violence. Uh, okay, violent video games and movies have negatively impacted children's behavior. And then I write, if you want to pause, I'm not going to read it, but if you want to read how I wrote this, it's all in third person. Okay, it's just background information. Information that when I read the articles, when I looked at the articles, I was actually able to formulate a really good couple sentences of ideas. If you just write one sentence, you're going to get no credit for this section. It has This one has to be at least three to four sentences, I would say, to really bring out a background of what you're going to be discussing. Now, your thesis statement, your thesis sentence is something that you worked on last week. So you can directly copy and paste it from that assignment. So if you remember back in last week's assignment, you worked on your thesis. Now, look at my feedback before you move forward you might have to rework this thesis okay if you do it's very important that you do because it could be up to 30 percent of your grade just one sentence because it really starts developing the structure of the essay okay so now after you do that you're going to come to your supporting paragraph so the first paragraph after your intro you're just going to use one sentence uh, facts from the articles okay that's paraphrased no quoting quotes result in major deductions it's all paraphrased okay before you start on with your information you get from your article you want to make sure you have a topic sentence so it, what a topic sentence is is the first sentence in the paragraph is going to pretty much reveal what that paragraphs about so notice how mine says violent video games place mental images of violence and crude behavior in children. Now I go into finding my information from my source. Okay, I'm going to use one article per supporting paragraph. So in this one here, I'm going to look for information that I'm going to paraphrase. Paraphrase means you read a section and then what you'll do is you'll put it in your own words. You still have to cite because you don't own thought, you don't own the information. The researcher still does, okay? And you have to properly cite it. This video is also gonna help show you how to cite. All three details need to be cited, no matter what. Get into the habit of citing anytime you use a source. It's required anyways. Otherwise, if you don't cite, you're passing it off as your information. And you can't, because that's plagiarism. Even if you paraphrase it, you're still you're still plagiarizing because you're stealing 
an idea from a research article that was written by researchers. Okay, so if you notice here, all three details are going to be cited and also paraphrased. You can stop and read what I wrote, and I, and you'll see in a second. And after the third uh, supporting paragraph, I'll show you how I got my information and how I paraphrased it. Okay, so notice with the citation. If I'm going to say according to, a lot of times students will put something like according to research, that's incorrect. That's not properly citing. If you say according to research and you don't cite, there's no credit because which article are you talking about? What researchers are you talking about? When you say according to and you put the researchers' names, that's giving proper credit and it's proper way of saying this is a study so you don't have to put a court uh, a study written by this 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 an article this 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 you could just put the name of the researchers like this it's first name it's, it's no first names no initials it's just last names and if you notice there's a difference between when I use it in a sentence as part of a sentence versus when I have it in uh, parentheses okay you have that is, that is a very distinct difference right there Okay, so if I put it was reported that playing violent video games and I go on with that, I want to make sure I back that up with a citation. If I state it was reported and I don't have a citation, then that's not properly citing. There's no credit. You have to cite what you reference and you have to reference what you cite. Okay. And then in the each supporting paragraph, you'll have a transition statement like this one. It, it is important now to understand ways violent movies desensitizes children towards acting out in the same mannerisms. So now I'm going to go into this other subtopic of how they give the thoughts, the mental images of aggression. Because you remember back up here in my, in my thesis statement, it's going to immunize children towards violence. Now I'm going to use the movie part to actually talk about how it actually gives desensitization towards, uh, towards it. Children will form schemas in their mind that they are part of, the, of, of a violent world. Uh, it's found that when children watch violent films, they tend to act out verbally and indirect aggression, which means they may not be shooting somebody, but they're acting out aggressively, like maybe arguing more often. So that's very important to, to have known as part of like how it immunizes children towards violence. Okay. And so I have that here. Notice how I have my citations again. So you could also say, instead of saying a study found or research found, you could just put the last name and then f I'm going to try to pronounce Sengonul found when children watch violent. You could say that too. Or you can just come straight out like here and say, children will form schemas in their mind that they are part of a violent world. And then you cite. That's indicating that that's from research. Okay, so you could do either or. And again, you notice how I have my transition statement here, what's going to introduce my next subtopic, and my persuasive statement up here that's going to introduce what this is. Okay, same thing with the third subtopic. Parental support is valuable in guiding children with violent media. Boom. I state what this paragraph's pretty much about, and then I go into the details. Remember, the details should be about one sentence. should not be more. You don't need to do that because I'm going to show you how you'll expand on each detail. It's really interesting because you're basically going to take one detail in the paragraph next week and you're going to expand on it and then go to the next citation, expand on it, and give examples. So it's really simple. It really is. So just trust me on the process, okay? So as I get down here, you're going to wonder, where do you get this information uh, from the article? So what I do when I look at a research article I'm going to look right here. This is the abstract. You can also see the abstract right here. If this kind of bugs your mind or eyes, which it does me, I come right here. And if you read in here, it tells you at least two to three very important findings that they found. And you want that. You want to find what they found in 2011. Okay. Not what the researchers stated in the past. You probably saw how to read a research article. And if you didn't, that's okay because I'm going to go over it here. Notice how in 1999, the researcher found, is writing about some study in 99, 2002, 2097. This introduction part is just showing you 
and, and all this other information background is the literature is showing you why they're doing the study. When a research study is done, they have to show backup. The researchers have to show why they're doing the study, the purpose of the study. They cannot just come up um, on a whim and say, we're doing a study on this. So you really don't want to pull from that because that's from past. You want to find what they found in 2011, because that's when this article is written. What information did Zimmerman and Pogarski find in 2011? Okay. If you want to read more about what's on the actual uh, abstract, here's results, okay? And if you come down past the results, you'll see an area that's usually called discussion, okay? Now, in the discussion, you'll also still see stuff cited from the past. And the reason why that's there is they're saying, here's what we found in 2011, and this is what we found in the past in comparison. So don't worry about that. Just find what you, just look at what you found in the current year article. So you could read through it, but hone in on this up here. What did they find? What was the study about? What did they actually find in the study? What was the results? That's what you want to use. That's where I got my information for my research articles, okay? Is I basically did that. Now, same thing with the conclusion. You wanna make sure that you are writing information in third person throughout the whole thing. And then you want to make sure you restate uh, in different words the thesis. Do your best to do that. And then you want to summarize some main points and then give some final remarks. You don't want to give your viewpoint. You'll you lose total credit in this section. Sometimes students will say, in my experiences, I have found that this is true. This is automatic zero for that section. It's not about your experiences or your knowledge or your viewpoint. It's about what research states. Okay, That's what writing an academic essay is about. Okay, and you can pause and read this to get an idea. Now, here's the references. This is how I copied and pasted them. Where did I copy and paste them from? Well, I went to last week's um, assignment, and I took just took them, copied it right here, pasted it, and just took each of them here. Okay, that's all I did. Now, one of the things you want to see is notice how... This one is up in all uppercase, uppercase words. You want to change that, okay? You want to only have the uh, first letter up in caps, all right? Make sure that you also have information like the number and, and the uh, volume and the page numbers. If you don't see that, you know, like in this article, let's say this stuff wasn't there. If you don't see the contents of the last name's year, name of article, the journal it came out of, the number and volume and page number, then you're going to have to fill that in. And that's real easy. You'll find that information right here on the article. You'll see where it says uh, page numbers 194 to 208, and usually the volume number and stuff somewhere around here somewhere. Let's see. Journal of Marriage and Family. This one's probably not a good example. I don't see where the volume and number are. 73. So if I come back here, you'll see 73. And if there's no number next to it, it'll be a 1. But usually you'll see like 46 and 2. Okay, so you'll see it there on the article. All right. So keep this pretty basic and simple compared to what you, and, and what you did last week. And um, if you have any questions, please let me know. But this is a really good thorough tutorial to help out. So if you have any questions, uh, send me a message in a private forum.